Hi, this is Patrick for your orientation, getting started with your Resolve 8 training. Uh, first thing I'd like to talk about real quick is how to use this training. And the point of what I've provided to you, the intense 16-minute film, uh, I think of it as muscle memory for your brain. I selected intense because when I did it, it was an exercise for me in shot matching. Uh, the rolling clouds over this footage really is a challenge. The actual setups are simple. It's two people talking on a rooftop. Uh, there are about three or four different setups, especially in the first scene. They've, the actors have about three different uh, marks that they hit. But even within those marks, it's kind of tough to keep it all graded together. And, and that's the point of this is to develop, use, this, use that film to help you develop the most, really the most fundamental task of a colorist, which is just to keep everything matching, making sure everything looks good and, or rather, <laughs> looks the way the client wants it to look. Sometimes that means making it look good. Sometimes it means making it look bad. But the, the most important thing is to be consistently good or consistently bad, to be consistently whatever the client is looking for. And in this regard, I think Intense is fantastic for that. And grading is like many skills and many crafts. You learn it by doing it. Uh, you can watch me do it. You can watch tutorials on Vimeo. You can go over to all the other sites that offer training and download those tutorials. But really, the only way you'll ever learn it is to do it. And again, that's the second point of Intense. At 16 minutes, it's a meaty project, and it actually lets you do. You know, it's not, uh, you know, commercials are easy, 30-second spots. In many ways, they're very easy. They really don't necessarily have to all connect together, or you can go real extreme, and you only have to maintain it for a very short period of time. Uh, you know, you might have uh, a couple dozen, you know, at best a couple dozen shots in a 30-second spot, and, uh, and tying all those together is often a very simple thing to do. Doing the same thing across, you know, the act one of Intense at seven minutes long, not so easy. And it's a great thing to do. Uh, you will learn, you will, uh, as you work through it, the practice will teach you how to sh match shots, how to, how to look at your blacks, how to set your whites, uh, how to manage skin tones. And then, you know, the trench coat in act one uh, on the female lead, uh, that thing will give away everything you're doing. And, and so then you're going to have to manage that as well. Uh, and it's really, it's, it's fantastic practice. Uh, I've heard, you know, I, I interview people who have taken the training and, and one or two of them said, yeah, it feels a lot like work. And I'm like, yeah, that's right. It feels a lot like work, doesn't it? Uh, you know, it's not meant to be some uh, fun thing you plan on throwing up on YouTube. It's meant to actually train a skill set and do it. And so if you're going to get out of this training, you've spent the money, uh, then you've got to do it in order to learn it. The pro way the process works is as we work through the weeks, you do it, you figure out what isn't working for you, what's giving you trouble. If you're not quite sure what to look at, you ask questions. You can ask questions directly of me through email. Uh, even better, ask them through the forum where other people can also chime in. I, we've got some pretty experienced people taking this class. Uh, and uh, and we'll, we'll help you work through the roadblocks. Remember, it's a, it's a very safe environment. It's, you know, Google is not going to find you. And your clients won't do a Google search on your name and find you're asking all these fundamental questions. That's why I'm keeping the forums private. Uh, it's to protect... Um, and, and make us all feel very comfortable asking very honest questions uh, without, uh, without our clients kind of peeking in behind, behind the curtain. And then after you ask your questions, do it again. And you'll find that it'll go easier. Uh, you might find some new things that are giving you problems, and you work that process along. And as you keep doing that, you'll find long-term success. One of the things that I find is really fascinating about our craft of color grading. There's no one way to do anything, even when, within Resolve, within a single note of Resolve. There are literally four different ways to do something. There's no one way to do it. There is a process. There is a workflow. 
And what you're, what I'm teaching you here is allowing you to learn from my struggles. Uh, <laughs> you know, this stuff doesn't come naturally. It doesn't come easy. And the fact is, uh, <laughs> when, when I'm color grading and I look at skin tones, if the skin tones look good to me, I know it's a bad grade because I've learned over the years that my natural instinct, if I grade to my eye, every, everyone looks too red. You know, um, everyone's flushed. And I've learned that over the years. And slowly now, I'm finally at the point now where I recognize, oh, wow, those skin tones look really good. I better back off of it. And it's almost getting to the point now where the skin tones where they need to be is where I'm finding I like them to be. But it's taken me years, literally, to struggle to get to that point. And I'm telling you this because I don't want you to think that, uh, you know, there's some sort of natural ability that you're born with or you're not. No, you can learn this stuff. And I'm going to help you accelerate your learning curve by showing you a lot of my tricks, showing you some of the things I do, uh, especially when I started out, that helped me identify some of my weaknesses and allowed me to become a better colorist. Along those lines, on the on this lesson's webpage, I've got a link to a blog post, uh, The Artist, the Colorist, and the Book. Here's the related stories, and here's the blog post. Do you see the symmetry, The Artist, the Colorist, and the 80-year-old book? Click through that. Read it. This lays the foundation for what I think I'm doing here on Tao of Color. And... And really, this words of wisdom from 1932, uh, you know, teaching people how to work with colors, it's been going on for 400 years now. And in 1932, um, you know, I read a post on another website talking about uh, an excerpt from the introduction about painters learning to work with a color palette. And it turns out, and I never knew this before, that there's theory behind how you lay out a color palette. And as you look at this, it looks remarkably similar to a color wheel, doesn't it? I mean, I was just struck by that. And this post kind of lays out why I think it's important to start with a structure. You know, I'm going to, like I said, I'm providing a workflow. There are many ways of doing it. I'm showing you mine because you need some place to start. And that's the point of this post is it is this um, painting instructor discussing how he thinks that you've got to have a place to start, even though we all hope in the end we can riff off of that and come up with our own unique way and our own unique style. At the beginning, you need a place to start. You need someone to kind of lay out some sort of groundwork for you. And that's what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to give you a structure. I'm trying to give you uh, a place to start, to build off of, and over time, you'll find your own ways of doing things you'll find that you might like to use different techniques than I might like, and that's okay. But the point is, is you've started someplace, and now you, you can grow from that. And really, that's, that's my greatest hope for anyone who's taking this training. The first thing we have to do is download our footage. Off the member dashboard, you're going to find a, the core downloads. And there are three things here. You, you can get the core downloads, which is the basic footage, the short film, Project files, which are for Final Cut and Premiere, Premiere Pro. If you, you don't have to download those project files, I'm going to be giving you XMLs you can load directly into Resolve. And then within Resolve, you'll relink to wherever you download these core downloads. At no point in this training will you need to go into your nonlinear editor. There will be one mega module where I, or mega lesson where I talk about prepping for a color job, how to round trip. And in that case, you're going to want Final Cut or you're going to want Premiere Pro and you're going to want to follow along. I do it in Final Cut. You can adopt this to Premiere. You can adopt the workflow to Avid as well. The optional downloads, I'm going to rename this because in Resolve, these aren't optional. Uh, I'm actually doing a lot of things with this. There's some really cool things we could do in Resolve that we really couldn't do in Apple Color. And these were optional for the Final Cut ecosystem workflows. But I'm going to make this mandatory because there are things we can do uh, with the footage that's in here that's really nifty and you need to be on top of it. Finally, the stuff that's all in these three uh, web pages, 
you can buy it on a DVD-R. What you're going to get is a data DVD. And it's going to contain the core downloads. It's going to contain the project files. And it's going to contain these optional, now required, additional downloads. They arrive on two DVD-Rs. It's for USA only right now. If you're an international, if you're outside of the United States, you can contact me directly. I will custom quote it. It's very expensive. Uh, you know, to Australia uh, a couple weeks ago, it was $80 uh, to give you a sense of the pricing. But contact me. We can custom quote it and see if uh, you, you think it's worth it. Core downloads. There are, three th there are two things in here. You've got three options to download, of which you're only going to do two. You are going to download the rough audio mix. And then you're going to download either the two gig packages or the one gig packages. These two packages are identical to each other. There is no difference in terms of what's actually in them. The difference is the size of the packages. You know, you can see by, you know, the numbers I put in here, these tend to be close to two gigs. These tend to be close to one gig. The concept being, if you've got a bit of a sketchy internet connection as you're downloading uh, and it fails on you, losing, you know, being 90% of the way on a one gig download is a lot less, less painful than being 90% of the way on a two gig download. And I don't, I want don't want you to feel pain. <laughs> I, I want this to be a happy experience for you. You can choose which of these you want. You don't need both of them. Pick one. And, and then where are you going to put it? I would advise storing them on an external drive. If you've got an eSATA drive on a RAID, that's fantastic. Firewire 800 is acceptable. If you're on an iMac or, or, or a... Um, a MacBook Pro and you don't have an external drive, I'd follow Re Resolve's recommendation in getting as fast a hard drive as you can. If you can get the biggest, fastest SSD drive that you can get will give you the best performance on Resolve. And that's because one of the reasons they say that is they expect that you'll probably be running with some footage off those, off the internal drives, and they just want you to have a really fast hard drive. I would echo that um, recommendation. And... As a note, this footage is all H.264. If you're familiar with H.264, uh, you know that it's a little bit taxing on most computers. And you may want to transcode all this stuff to ProRes. I will eventually be doing that myself for this training. Feel free to go ahead and do that. In a later lesson, I will show you how to do that. Let's go to the next page and you want to get your project files. These are what I was talking about. This was really mostly for the Final Cut ecosystem training. Uh, not The After Effects thing isn't really relevant to what we're doing, but it's all here in this one package. I'm just letting you know it's there. Like I said, ignore it if you wish. Uh, use it if you wish. Then our optional downloads, which aren't optional anymore, the title and credit sequence, and then picture lock. You could probably hold off on downloading this picture lock immediately. I think I'm going to give you one large picture lock for reference. It's real low quality. It's ProRes proxy. And there's a reason why if, if you download these two, you're going to have to join them together. So I'll just go ahead and do that for you. And eventually that'll be the way I provide this is as a joined picture lock. Uh, but also download the title and credit sequences because we are going to work with graphics inside of Resolve. And I want to show you how to do that because what was provided to me doesn't actually work in Resolve, and it's very likely that you'll be provided these sequences that won't work in Resolve as well, in terms of you know graphics. And I'm going to show you how to fix it, how to go, how to prep it for Resolve, and then how do we work with titles that have external key signals, and how do we do that in Resolve? We're going to go through that, not in week one, uh, probably in week two, definitely in week three. And then finally, for U.S. residents, I've got two options here. Just select whichever you want, and, uh, and that's it. As I mentioned, uh, these are H.264 camera originals. They were shot at 1080p, 23.98. That's what you have. So you have as clean an original um, as you can get. Uh, and that's really the only way I could, I could give you a 16-minute project and 
keep it relatively reasonable. I mean, the moment I go to anything bigger than H.264, we'd have 50 gig downloads, and that just wouldn't work. I'd have to be shipping you guys hard drives. Uh, and then I want to talk about Lesson 2. In Week 1 Fundamentals, Lesson 2, th- this is core stuff. Um, you have to watch this lesson. Uh, you can download or you can watch it streaming. The thing about this, hey, the thing about this is, hey, that's me. The thing about this is, this is uh, the inspiration for this website, which was a PowerPoint presentation I give uh, to user groups, uh, mostly here on the East Coast. And I've gotten tremendous feedback on this thing. You have to watch this. There's, there's no choice. I don't care if you're a really experienced colorist who knows scopes inside and out or you're brand new. Uh, you will learn something in here. It covers color theory. It covers image processing. And yes, it also co- covers scopes. The thing is, is I, what I found when I was doing the original color training, if I didn't give you this presentation... I'd have to repeat this stuff over and over again because I didn't know if you knew what I know. And this is the foundation for the entire craft. This is literally fundamentals. And we both need to be on the same page. I need you to watch it, spend 90 minutes, set the time aside, and watch it. And watch it before week two starts. If you want to jump ahead and if you're itching to get going on Resolve, absolutely start on week three, on lesson three. But you need to finish watching this before week two starts. In lesson three, the Resolve Quick Start, uh, you're going to need to download uh, this XML. And you will be able to, following along on, uh, on this training, you will be able to uh, import that XML and link it up to the footage that you've downloaded. And what you'll find throughout this training is I provide things two ways. I provide you the desktop iPad version. Now, this is for a desktop, but it's also compatible with the iPad, meaning you won't have to recompress it to get it to work on an iPad. Uh, It is 720p, and you can just download it. I also provide streaming, and they're broken up into chunks, you know, 11 minutes, 9 minutes, 10 minutes. And as you watch this from the beginning, uh, you know, you can just immediately bounce to wherever you want and as it gets, you just notice what happened is it went from part one to part two. Does it automatically, as you start watching this, it'll automatically go to each version uh, to the next one in sequence until you get to the end. The point being that if you, uh, if you stop midway, you can just make a note of where you, you know, which part you're on and pick it up from there. Or if you're not sure where you were, you can just quickly, you know, this will take you 30 minutes in, this will take you 40 minutes in and, and you can just uh, find your way very quickly, very easily. And of course, you can go full screen. So if we go here, Scopes. click play, expand it out. Now we're full screen. Or I can watch it inside here, inside this little window. I would recommend watching it full screen if you're going to do the high quality streaming version. And at the end of lesson three, uh, you know, where I'm going to leave you, and, and really for the, this first week of training, is I want to get you to the place where you can experiment with Resolve. You're not going to know how to use everything, but you can certainly do a lot of fiddling. And you can do it in such a way that even if you mess, don't worry about leaving it a, leaving a nice clean sequence. I'm going to give you a different XML when we actually start grading. This is the quick start. You can mess with this all you want, leave all your shots in all sorts of crazy states. Don't worry about it. It's good. That's exactly what I want you to do. I want you to experiment. Thank you for your support. Uh, Seriously, Um, I love that you are so interested in learning color grading and learning resolve that you opted uh, for what really is a very unique training program uh, and and really does require a bit of work on your part. And I think that's fantastic that you're willing to take it this seriously. So happy grading, and I will see you on the forums and in email and maybe around uh, at... uh, at presentations. You know, I love it when students come up and talk to me at live presentations. All right. Thanks a lot. Catch you next time.